Hey everyone, I'm Sean Duhimmel from the Mass Retirees Association. Welcome to our weekly update. Today is Friday, November 6th. Before I get started today, I want to remind all of you that today on Friday at 1 p.m., we are holding our November Telephone Town Hall meeting. It starts at 1 p.m. The subject matter today will be the state budget, which is what I'm also gonna discuss on this update for you. Um, our special guest will be State Representative Mark Cusack. Mark is the chairman of the House Committee on Revenue, a key member of the House leadership team, and he's going to discuss the state budget, the state's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, where things are at in Massachusetts in terms of our revenue picture, what the economic outlook is going forward. There's a lot going on. Um, we're delighted that he can take some time um, this afternoon to share his insight with our members. And if you have questions for us, whether it's about your retirement, about the subject matter that we're covering on the call, uh, those sorts of things, you will have the opportunity during the Teletown Hall to ask a question. You can press zero at any time during our town hall events. That will connect you with our mass retiree staff. You can pose your question to them. We're gonna get to as many questions as we possibly can. And if it's something of a personal nature, either myself or a member of our team will give you a call right after the meeting uh, today to follow up with you and make sure that, that your question and your needs are being addressed and so forth. So there are two ways that you can participate in this members only event. One is simply by receiving the automated call from us at one o'clock today. All you need to do is stay on the line and you'll be automatically connected to the meeting. The other way for you to participate is to call our dedicated toll-free number. Now that toll-free number has been provided to you in our newsletter. It's contained in our email that's coming out along with this video today. Um, we don't publish it for non-members because again, this is a members only event. So you have to be a member of Mass Retirees in order to participate in these events. So those are the two ways for you to participate. If you're free this afternoon, we invite you to join with us. It's gonna last roughly an hour. You can come and go as you need. I know an hour is a long time for many people to commit, but you know, again, we wanna do all we can to connect with you and provide information for you. Um, and this is a great way to do it, particularly now since we can't have in-person meetings. But with that, let me jump right into the good news of the week, or really good news of this week. Yesterday afternoon, the House Ways and Means Committee unveiled its version of the fiscal year 21 state budget. This follows right on the heels of Governor Baker filing his updated version of the budget just two weeks ago. Now the good news is that both versions of the budget, the governor's budget and the House version of the budget, contain a 3% cost of living increase for retired state employees and retired teachers. That will be retroactive to July 1st of this year. Now the hope is if the legislature can get the budget finished and back to the governor um, by the middle of this month before Thanksgiving, the hope is that the state and teacher retirement systems can include the retroactive COLA in your November pension checks, which would be really good news for a number of, of our members. Now the COLA at the state level for state and teacher retirees, the base remains at $13,000. We are continuing to work on that, and we've explained the difficulties in, in increasing the base um, through in previous videos and in our newsletter, but we're gonna continue to work on it, and, and we're happy to provide that, answer those questions regarding the COLA base and, and why it's just so difficult um, to even just incrementally increase the base. It's a very, very expensive proposition at the state level. Um, that we're gonna to continue to work to improve both for the traditional COLA as well as the COLA enhancement legislation that we have pending right now. But for 2021, for FY21, 3% COLA, $13,000 base. This reflects the same benefit that nearly all of our local retirees received this past July. Um, local retirees with the exception, unfortunately, of the city of Malden, um, have paid a COLA this year, 3% COLA in, in, for the most part on various bases. The base at the local level is set by the local retirement system in conjunction with the local legislative body. So whether it be the city council and a mayor or town meeting or in the counties, the county retirement board advisory council set the COLA. So that's under local control. So virtually all retirees are gonna receive a COLA this year. Now, in addition to the COLA, the House has also 
fully funded the Commonwealth's pension um, obligation in terms of funding the pension system for the coming year, which is approximately $3.1 billion dollars and taxpayer monies are being appropriated to fund the Commonwealth's responsibility for the state and teacher retirement systems, as well as some local obligations that they have. And in addition to that, the state is also fully funding and maintaining the benefit levels for the State Group Insurance Commission, which is very, very important. So all around, this is good news for retirees. Now, what we were fearful of over the past few months, and we've talked about this, is the fact that right now, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, Massachusetts is facing somewhere between a four to six billion dollar deficit for fiscal year 21. Now, some have said, well, why don't they just use the rainy day fund to cover that? Well, the rainy day fund contains less than, less than $4 billion in funding, and they certainly do not want to deplete the rainy day fund because we are concerned that over the next couple of years, particularly at heading into calendar year 21 as the pandemic continues our economic situation in here in massachusetts and quite honestly around the world we're going to continue to suffer because of the pandemic and we can't spend down the rainy day fund and have nothing nothing left you know to help us down the road so we were fearful this year that retirees could potentially face some cuts well the good news is that whether it's the governor the House, and then when the Senate gets the budget over the next couple of weeks, we don't anticipate there being any move to balance the state's budget on your backs. And that's great news because that's a situation that we have faced in the past during past recessions or, or past economic difficulties. One of the things that our elected officials in the past have turned to is cutting benefits and cutting funding for retiree programs. And right now, we're not seeing any signs of that. That being said, we are very concerned about the situation going forward, particularly as the fiscal year 22 budget is put together next spring. We really need to be on our toes at both the state level and the local level, watching out for any particular or, or focused um, cutbacks in terms of retiree programs. But for today, this is great news. Now, the last thing I wanna mention, and this applies to a countless number of members right now, who have chosen to return to public service, particularly this year in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. We've lost count of the number of members who have gone back into public service to help out, whether it's in a public health role, public safety role, working for the state and the unemployment office, helping to process all those unemployment claims. We're very proud of the work that you're doing. Um, thank you very much for, for doing what you're doing. And in many cases, as a frontline worker, you are putting yourselves in harm's way to provide a public service. And you're doing a tremendous job at that. At the same time, we wanna make sure that you're protected. One of the ways that we're working to protect you is extending the waiver that allows you to work and allows you to not be restricted in that type of work. That waiver expires at the end of this year on December 31st. We need to extend that waiver at least into 2022, if not for the full duration of the pandemic emergency. And we are working right now with the governor, with the legislative leadership to pass that extension before the end of the year to give everybody some peace of mind. As soon as we have more information on that, we will be sure to get it to you. So in closing, if you're available this afternoon at 1 p.m., join with us and call the toll-free hotline or the number to connect that number's in your newsletter, that number's contained in this email. You can also simply wait to receive the automated call from me. And all you need to do is hang on the line and you'll be automatically connected. So with that, thank you again so much and we'll talk to you again next week.